Hey everyone! Unfortunately, holographic displays, like the one right behind me, are terrible, and they can literally never be used for anything practical. Anyways, a little while ago I covered this project in a short, and today we're going to be showing off how it works, what makes it tick, as well as why it's totally impractical. So to start off, if you probably couldn't already see, this thing runs off of fireworks, specifically these kinds of fireworks. And the reason why I call it a holographic display is because the system looks almost as though the text is standing out of the display. And we create its form by locking it inside of glass block chambers. And here are a few trial runs of different designs I did, trying to figure out what exactly looked the best before I settled on this design right here. I could go into a lot of the nuance on why I chose a specific design, or why it's the shape the way it is, but it's really just a bunch of trial and error, testing and seeing what works, as well as figuring out what design I liked. I also tried uh, wall displays, and I just thought that they didn't look as good because of the way the particles fell. Now that we've covered the concepts, let's get into the mechanics. First off, each of these firework dispensers, which is hooked up to each of the 27 different modules that I've set up here, requires both power to tell it when to trigger, as well as like plumbing, item transfer, just the water stream that delivers fireworks every time we use one up. And setting this whole system up was just essentially more trial and error, and trying to figure out how all of this fit together in the best way possible. As you can see, we've got water running in various directions and trying to worm them through all the other previous circuitry that I've put down. So unfortunately for us, this setup ended up being a ridiculous problem. Because if we look at our um, modules here, and we give them numbers, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and we read it from top left to bottom right, this is a very intuitive order. And thus, we can program it very easily. I want to turn on the top one, I just hit A. And it's very, very simple. The problem is, due to my haphazard wiring and my very nearsighted approach, we ended up more like a terrible setup like this. And the reason this is terrible is because if I want to turn on this one, I have no idea what letter this is that's hooked up to it. It could be V for all I'm concerned. The solution to this problem was to hook up each of these nightmare modules, these outputs, and hook them up to where their inputs should be to make an intuitive program experience. And the solution for this is just spaghetti code. We just wire each one to its thing and hope that nothing breaks. For the astute of you, you might realize that this is some sort of glorified wires task from the game Among Us, and you're absolutely right. And it's just that, except a million times harder, and you can't overlap any lines. Except we have the third dimension to work with, so it's a little bit easier. But still, it's a bit of a nightmare. If we take a look at what that mess looks like in-game, it's just this giant cluster of rails running everywhere. The reason I use rails is because they're really bad at touching other wires, meaning they're pretty easy to run directly next to each other, or over each other, or across, unlike redstone dust. And each of these wires connects to a single nodule, that will just simply tell a module to fire its firework, as well as use one of these droppers to deliver a single firework to replenish the one that was lost. Okay, so let's write to this thing. How do we actually program it? So, if we look at this right here, we've got 27 modules that can each be turned on or off, firework and no firework. And we've got 27 inputs, each hooked up to those modules. So the most intuitive way to write to it is to simply have a 27-bit string that gets fed into it, determining what is displayed. If we look at this string right here, this one series of ones and zeros, zero being off, no firework, one being on, firework, this actually corresponds to the display of four, five, six on our seven segment displays here. And what's actually super special is that you can see exactly how I programmed this just by looking at it. So if we look at this seven bit cluster at the end here, this corresponds to our six. And how the six would actually look on our display is by activating this, 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 and this. Now, by looking at the display, we can say, oh yeah, this third module, counting from top left to bottom right, as dictated by this input system, is off. So we go to our cluster of numbers and we simply switch this bit to off. And that's the only one we switch off, and that corresponds to 6. 
and I've done this for all the others, as well as all the other other presets I've set up. So you can see how it's very easy to set up any configuration of ons and offs in-game with just ones and zeros. Our actual setup here has exactly nine possible presets, except you can just essentially keep repeating this over, it doesn't really matter. And essentially, that corresponds to these nine presets that can be selected from this control panel right here. And there's two settings for actually displaying. You've got instant, which just shoots all of them at the same time. And you've got cascade, which, well, does a cascade. Unfortunately, the one thing that we absolutely cannot expand about this thing is the amount of modules you have. This is the maximum. And I say that not because my design skills are bad and you can't um, stack it, which you can't, but it's more so to do with the particle limit. Because if we have a setup of 27 dispensers here, this is the worst case scenario for that one, my game is going to tank a little bit, but it's all good. Because at least we can all s see all the particles for the moment that they're there. Now, if we try hooking up maybe double the amount, or even just slightly more, we get that happening. And that's the result of the particle engine deleting the first particles that spawn to make space for the new ones. And that's going to cause some of our modules to not even show up. And this, this is super good because it prevents your game from absolutely tanking, but it's problematic for me because now my display sucks. So, unfortunately, having any more than a specific amount of fireworks is not possible. You may have also noticed that I've gone this entire video without addressing the single worst problem of this entire thing, and that just for maybe five seconds of display time, you burn through on average about like 20 rockets, which are all very expensive in of themselves. So this thing is not only highly impractical because the display is the definition of non-permanent, disappears after a couple seconds, but it also sucks in that it's so expensive to use every single time you use it. Ultimately, this thing is hilariously impractical, and nobody would ever have a reason to build it, because it just sucks. But that's the reason to build it. Because if I ever do a survival world in the near future, and I get to the point where I have enough access to gunpowder, I'm absolutely building this thing. Because it looks really cool. And that's the only thing I actually cared about when designing it not the nightmare of logistics, or perhaps the massive firework burnout rate, but whatever the case, looks cool, and that's all that matters. So, that'll be it for today's video, and if you really like this sort of content, make sure to like and subscribe, I'll keep making stuff on the various projects that I'm doing, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.